Hello everyone, welcome to art class. Today we are going to be talking about the Great Wave, which is a very, oh you can kind of see through it, there you go. It's a very famous uh, piece of artwork from the 1800s by the Japanese artist Katsushika Hokusai, that's his name. And this was originally done with uh, uh, woodblock prints where each color that you see, uh, the artist would cut out that out of a piece of wood. So I think this has about four different colors. So that means there's four pieces of wood. Maybe there's a little bit more. Um, so for each color, they would cut out spaces where that color is going to go and then print it on the sheet of paper. And then you could make a bunch of them once you had the, the prints ready. And this is, uh, was actually from a, a series of pictures called uh, 36 Views of Mount Fuji. But you can see the subject of this picture is right here. It's Mount Fuji, which is the biggest uh, mountain in Japan. And so this original thing was just shots of, or photos, not photos, paintings of Mount Fuji from different perspectives. And you can see in this one, these giant waves are crashing down on these fishermen. And that's the drama of the book, or of the story, is that we don't know what's gonna to happen to them. So we are gonna to try to do our own version of the great wave. And again, we're gonna to try to use what we have at home and we will do our best. Let's get to it. All right, we have our sheet of paper. Here is the original again. And it said that this kind of uh, style of art has really influenced manga art, which is really popular uh, Japanese type of, kind of like a comic book or graphic novel that's really popular right now. And again, if you don't have colors at home or paints or anything like that, you can, uh, do it black and white. The manga style is done often in black and white. And this is another version of it that someone has drawn already. But you can see like this is still very distinct. You could do it black and white like this if you want to, or you could, you know, start shading in parts of the wave, leave that one, shading that. So you can do a lot with just a pencil if you'd like. But we are gonna start um, drawing our wave, or series of waves, I should say. Um, I'm gonna start in the foreground, which is the stuff that's closer to me. I'm gonna draw a little wave, something like that. And, you know, here it has the white caps that's kind of come, the foamy stuff that's coming over the top. We will add that in later. And then I'm gonna draw another wave here. And then maybe one right here. And then we're gonna draw our big wave. Something like that. And I'm doing it in pencil. I'm hoping you can uh, see it well enough. Um, here, I'll try and move you a little bit closer. Um, and then I'm gonna color it with a, I'll use a Sharpie again. And now we're gonna add the white caps. And this is where you can kind of get creative. So you're doing the, you know, the white cap that comes over the wave. And then we gotta draw the, the other part of our wave. So this is our big wave coming over this way. All these waves are spilling this way, so. That. Do the same thing with this big wave. Just doing a jagged line here that what you think would look like a, a wave. This is a little one here. And this one, we're going to draw like that. So then the other part of this is showing the 
direction, the movement of how the waves are going. So you can see in this original, he has like the, the kind of lines that see, so you, you can see the light blue and the dark blue going up. Almost so you can see the movement of how the wave is going. <clears throat> so we're gonna try and replicate that by doing something similar here. And they don't have to be exactly the same width apart. I think it looks better when they're not. But you get to decide. There we go. And here's this wave here. So it helps when you think of, you can picture each wave. And maybe each one has a slightly different direction. And there we go. And then the only other thing that we have to add is the horizon back here, which is relatively low. And then we have the famous Mount Fuji, and we'll put snow caps on that. So now I'm going to go over and uh, with Sharpie and highlight it, and um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, now I'm done. So then we have our basic picture. And so now what you're encouraged to do is color it in if you have the means. And like I said with um, um, earlier, um, you can use pencil and just do shading like I did here shade stuff in and you also notice that I didn't put a boat in mine which you can decide to do which you know is also fun to do but you can see how since this is further away maybe I would color this in kind of light like that and maybe this would be darker because it's the angry sea so you can't do a lot with pencil um, but with this, now that I've highlighted it, I might go back and erase some of my pencil drawings that weren't exactly perfect. And then I'm gonna color in, I'm gonna try to do like the wood carving, uh, wood carvings would do where there's only like a handful of colors. Um, so maybe two different colors of blue, two different colors of brown. And then it's up to you, you can, do the alternating 
blue, lighter blue, blue, lighter blue. Um, and then you can leave some of this white. Or if you do have white paint, you could paint that there. And if you have uh, any kind of paint that's thicker, not watercolor, I wouldn't say. Watercolor might work. I don't think so, though. But you can do uh, a thing where you, here's a picture of someone doing it. You put the uh, white paint on a brush, and then you flick the tip of the brush, and it shoots the paint onto the canvas. And you just do that a little bit so that it looks like it replicates this, where you can see the little spots. It's like little splashes of water everywhere. And it just gives it that much more texture and, and uh, depth and detail. One thing that I like about the original of this is how sharp it is. You can kind of see it, like the lines are really defined. It's very a sharp picture. It's not pastoral or you know blurry or like the stuff in the background is still sharp. So that's it. That's the Great Wave um, and our version of it. And then you can take it to whatever level you would like. Um, I think one of the more important things with this is um, getting the, the layers and then how you can see the lines of the waves and it kind of helps show you movement. And that's it. Good luck.